Good evening and welcome to Just a Little Bit. And Just a Little Bit is brought to you in part by Destination Sistrunk, Broward County Cultural Division, and Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Visitors Bureau. And if you've been following us for a while, and I hope that you do, like us, share it, subscribe, and follow us on uh, YouTube, and uh, get some of the news that's coming from you from several black perspectives throughout the African diaspora. And this week's news, on a sad note, uh, the shooting in Miami that left 23 people wounded, two dead. Uh, a sad case. Brothers and sisters, we have to put those guns up as if people in uniform wasn't enough killing us. And here we are adding to our own woes. So it's time for us to stop that. As we go across the country and checking out some of the news stories, it's heart-wrenching, man, when you see a father screaming and crying because his son was just shot in a senseless shooting. Again, 23 people were shot, two were killed. Howard University names its theater department building on its campus after the great actor. We know him as Black Panther. James Brown, Mr. Chadwick Boseman. The extra $300 a week in jobless benefits will end come June 30th. That's right, you will no longer be able to get that COVID relief. So you better tighten up. Another thing that's happening, it is hurricane season. Today, June the 1st, begins the hurricane season. And if COVID wasn't enough, now we're coming into the season where we could be devastated by a number of storms. Medical marijuana and education. Wow. On the campus of Florida a and University, they are doing great studies and great strives in understanding the implications behind medical marijuana. And there are a group of pastors who are pushing the issue. Smoke more pot, a joint a day will keep the doctor away. And remembering Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Tulsa race riots is just one of the most starkest example of how black wealth has slapped America in the face because of the racism that it was treated with. Another town here in Florida, Rosewood, was another prime example of black wealth uh, at its finest. And again, because of the alleged crime perpetrated against a white female, the towns were burned down to oblivion. Wow. 40 on the 40. 40 seconds of the history and strength of and faith and perseverance of black people. Thomas Dowding, he was the black king of oysters. In the late 1800s out of New York, a man named Thomas Downing built an empire out of the oyster bar. But here's the thing, he was a black man. Folks say black people don't eat oysters. We've been eating oysters ever since we came here. And Brother Thomas Downing made a fortune out of oysters. Growing Our Voices, this is the segment where we like to focus in on our young people. We like to talk to them and listen to them and see what they have to say. And today, our guest is Janaya Green. Janaya is a junior at virtual school. She had no idea that she would be on the podcast. She came today to listen and to observe what she could learn because she wants to produce her own podcast show. So please help me welcome to the stage Miss Janiah Green. <laughs> well, hello, Janiah. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm terrific and getting better. I know I put you on the spot. Your grandmother was bringing you here just so you could see. And I uh, flipped the script, and now I got you on the podcast show. How do you feel about that? I, uh, it's inspiring. <laughs> oh, so you're, you're good to go? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, great. Now tell us a little bit about you, Janiah. I'm 17 years old, I'm a junior in high school, and I enjoy learning about journalism, film, media, communications, arts, and culture. Okay. You and I had a conversation. We mentioned, you mentioned several things or several 
uh, higher institutes of learning that you uh, perhaps had vision on or thought about attending. And could you tell me some of those schools, please? A uh, few of the schools that I mentioned was the Florida State University in Tallahassee, the University of Miami in Miami, and the University of Central Florida in Orlando. Okay, and then what did I say? <laughs> Why are there no HBCUs? And then what did you say? I said, well, I thought about Howard. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> so, so, and that, that led me to, to, to ask you some other questions, you know, about certain things and about yourself. Um, one thing that, that uh, uh, really inspired me is, first of all, the, the way you, the, your command of the English language, you know, that, that's really uh, inspiring for me. Um, but let me ask you this, what is it that you want to do? Well, that's a very broad question because I've given a lot of thought to that, but I'd say the first and foremost thing would be a film producer and screenwriter. Oh, you have, you have, you have anything in mind? Meaning what? It's film. You know, any, any project, I mean, anything that, that comes to your mind? Uh, I don't have a definitive idea yet. I mean, I have a little, uh, on my notes app on my iPhone, I'm pretty sure everybody's aware of the notes app, but I have like a, different themes and different tropes that I think about that I want to represent in films. But I guess I, what I can tell you is I do have a preference for what genre I would go for, and it'd probably be either drum, documentary, or mystery. Let me get up and move away from here. <laughs> you can come take my seat. <laughs> I, 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 run that by me one more time. You, 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 you said, first of all, Janaya, thank you. Thank you. Um, now, 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 I, I know there's an organization that's, that says you can, you, you, you can be what you see. So where did you, who, who, who do you aspire to be like or better than, or is there anybody in particular that you um, like their work or notice their work that gets your attention? Well, I normally, I mean, the people that I look up to, the people that inspire me are normally people who are not just, I wouldn't say just film, but people who have really been innovative and unique in the way they handle their work. I um, have particularly found favor, I don't know if anybody is aware, but there is a woman named Anna Wintour, and she is a big woman in fashion, and she's the editor-in-chief of Vogue, and I've just been really inspired by her because it definitely the conversation with women and women being in more positions of power and having more authority and more transparency and being vocal about what they feel, I've been really inspired by her. But I guess I would say, in pertaining to film, I've been a big fan of Alfred Hitchcock. What is it about Mr. Hitchcock that draws your fancy? I just love his way of film, like the way he dictates suspense and mystery and thriller and uh, like the spine-tickling fear that you see in horror films. So I particularly like um, the iconic shower scene in Psycho. Oh, the Bates Hotel. Yep, the Bates Hotel, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> so mm -hmm, yes, he's mm -hmm. definitely a very iconic uh, figure in the film um, industry and I've been really inspired by him. Okay, so, so what are your plans for this summer? My plans for this summer is just to stay educated and take a few summer courses just to keep my mind stimulating just so, because I think that sometimes, especially with teens, when we go on summer vacation, we tend to forget about the information that we learned in the previous year. So I definitely make an effort to make sure my mind is flowing and my creative juices are flowing. And in addition to that, I work um, on getting more community service hours, even though I already have met the, I've surpassed the graduation requirement. But uh, the community service hours, and I'm working on starting my podcast mm -hmm. and different things like that. Can you share with us the name of your podcast? Could you tease us with it a little bit? Okay, so the name of my podcast, I guess you would say it's a working title, a pending title, but uh, what I'm working, the title that I'm working with is called Hollywood Hack. And so I've been particularly passionate about learning about the entertainment industry. And basically what I want to talk about with my podcast is pretty much dissecting the entertainment industry and um, exposing parts about it that people may not focus on more. Like, uh, for example, I talk about why um, 
there aren't enough black, well not just black, but why there isn't much diversity in country music. You know, you don't particularly see, there are a few black artists in country music, but one would particularly say that it's more dominated by white people or why you don't see Asians in country music or Latin Americans in country music. And uh, another idea that I also came up with was talking about um, the disparities of different genders in the sports industry. Mm -hmm. You know, why do you see men at the forefront in the sports industry when we're talking about the NBA or the NFL and you don't see people really talk about the WNBA as, as much as they talk about the NBA. So those were a few of my ideas. Okay. Would, would, would I, and get ready to cut this if it don't turn pan out right, would I be uh, stepping over the bounds if I ask you about transgender in the, into the sports is that something that no not at all okay. I definitely be open to talking more about that especially with the well, not especially with but not so much just about gender but I'd be more uh, willing to talk about the lack of diversity with you know the LGBTQ community or uh, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders or um, more Europeans or things like that. Wow, I thought that I was dealing with a closed can, but you have opened up and blossomed into this this big flower and I gotta find out how to pick the petals apart and, and, and come up with some other stuff. Why'd you set me up like this? <laughs> it's ironic you're asking that because I feel like I'm the one set up. Oh, you gonna flip the script? You gonna turn it around on it? No. I think I, I just think I just think this is this is this is uh, appropriate for the title, uh, "Growing Our Voices." We get a chance to talk, for me to understand where you're coming from, what's on your mind, and you have definitely <laughs> shared that uh, most appropriately. Okay, is there? Is, can can you leave us with something before you exit? Give us give us something that that's. I mean, uh, you you've already said some profound statements. I'm blown away, totally. Thank you know. You. Uh, uh, how how it, how would you how would you encourage uh, uh, other young folk uh, to be not afraid to follow uh, their dreams? Um, what I would probably say is I've always been, especially in terms of handling like big social issues like racism and. Um, environmentalism and lack of diversity and things like that but normally what I say to youth is find a way to shed a light on your voice more uniquely especially with um, I think a lot of times people tend to look at the our generation generation Z um, as you know those silly little kids who are glued to technology and their phones all the time but uh, there are definitely youth out there who are more innovative and inspire and I just say find a platform, find some sort of outlet where you can express your voices in the way that you want to, in a way that feels comfortable for you. Wow. Sharon, where are you? Girl. <laughs> Janaya, you know, this has been, and I can truly say this, one of the uh, most uh, invigorating uh, interviews wow. that I've had. I mean, I don't have any notes. All, all I have of you is what you gave me. You know, and that's and that's tremendous. So I applaud you for what you have within within you, and you're able to bring it out. So please keep it up and share it. And you can come back anytime if you want to come host this spot, sit in my spot. You're welcome to do it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Yeah. Yes. It's always exhilarating and exhausting when you come off a segment like we just had. Our young folk are something else, and it's a pleasure. But you know how young people get to be who they are? They have adults who stand beside them, behind them, to help shape all that they are. And our next guest is Mr. Charles Cook. Charles is the dean of Sunrise High School. This is a special high school. Charles works with special students. Charles is a native of this area, homegrown, and a product of truly the 33311. So please help me in welcome Mr. Charles the Dean Cook to the stage. 
Mr. Cook, what's happening, man? Hey, I'm glad to be here, Mr. Hey, man, I'm glad you're here. You stood me up last week, but I'm glad you're here. Yeah, you got, you got told you. Trying, <laughs> yeah, I know. To I know. Some uncle things. <laughs> I know. I know, and I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Charles, sincerely, man, um, when I first met you, it was because of one of my nephews, basically. A mm -hmm. uh, young man that I know who was having some, some real rough times, yeah. you know, and uh, uh, you, you told me, you said, don't worry about it. I got it. Mm -hmm. You know, and for that, I'm forever indebted. I appreciate uh, it. And I saw... Uh, the attitude in which you deal with specifically black boys who uh, per perhaps want, want to live on the edge. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you get to that point? G give me a little of your background, would you, Mr. Cook? Well, first of all, I, I was born here in Fort Lauderdale. Um, I grew up here on Sixth Drunk, right on Sixth Drunk, matter of fact, right up the street on 15th Terrace, Northwest 15th mm -hmm. Terrace. 701, matter of fact, Northwest okay. 15 Terrace. That's my grandmother's address. Okay. Um, growing up here in the 80s, I, I saw a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just, from that time, absorbed a lot of good things and a lot of negative things. Mm -hmm. And as I grew older and um, just trying to make my way through, 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 through living here, mm -hmm. that I knew that I wasn't. If I would not, if I made it through this, I would be want to give back to the community and, and, and help help the youth. So I just always had it in me to want to be doing that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But I I got distracted along the way. Being that um, my mother had five kids. I have a twin sister to me, and I'm the only boy. So I grew up in the house with all ladies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And it kind of made me a little rebellious when I got in my teens. You know what I mean? I just wanted to get out of the house. Didn't want to be in the house with these ladies all day, every day. Mm -hmm. And I found myself getting in some trouble, you know, along the way. And I, I realized that when, when you get in this, at a certain age, you just got to make some changes in your life if you want to be a better person. And, and I learned from those mistakes I made when I was younger. And like I said, just want to always be able to give back. If I, I'm a product from this place, so when I got to the job where I'm at now, and I was working to, with those kids from in alternative spaces, and I remember being, I just remember being one of those kids. Mm -hmm. And I graduated from Dillard High School, and when I started working at these charter schools, I, I, I saw what was missing. And what was missing was the old school stuff. Mm -hmm. It took out all the coaches, all the, the, person, the, personaliz the personalization of being closer to your kids. Mm -hmm. They, you know, you can't say nothing to the kids. You can't do nothing to the kids. It was, you know, they had us walking on, uh, on, 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 on eggshells. On eggshells, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and um, I remember you had to have somebody that you had a little more respect for, deans, Coach Ingram at Dillard, okay, uh, Mr. Talbert at mm -hmm. Dillard. Uh, I the name all the coaches. The names can go for Miss Pender. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody over there, they were personally involved in us. Okay. I, I saw that, you know, seriously, uh, and you're dealing with, with the young man. Mm -hmm. you, okay, you, 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 how long have you been dealing in that field, Charles? This year will be um, almost 17 years. 17 years? Yeah, and I stumbled into it. I didn't really, uh, <laughs> I didn't, it wasn't the plan. Well, I look, man, say. 17 years? 17. <clears throat> I started, mm -hmm. I used to work at Whitten Rogers. Right. I went over there work as security. Mm-hmm. Uh, I worked there for a while. Then I, I wasn't making any money. Basically, long story short, so I left there and, and went to the city of Deerfield. I worked for the city of Deerfield for like five years, and I worked in the cemetery department. And working in that department, I found that I, I, I saw a lot of people dying, and it was the young people. Mm -hmm. So that never left my mind. And um, one day, my friend called me, and they were opening up another charter school. That's when they started opening all these charter schools. And he was like, Cook, they need, they need a security guy over there again. So I went to the school. It was called Leadership Academy. Mm -hmm. I went there. Um, they had um, about approximately 400 kids. With, th with those kids, it was just a lot of emotions, a lot of, a lot, a lot of stuff going, mm -hmm. <laughs> going on over there. Mm -hmm. I got hired. Long story short, the PE coach quit. They asked me one day I came to work, Mr. Cook, do you want to sub? I said, yeah, you know, I said, you know, I don't have my degree, but you know, I went to, I got my associates. They're like, well, that's perfect, you can do that for electronics. 
I said, okay, cool. For I went from that day to three months to six months through the whole year. And they were like, Mr. Cook, you did wonderful. <laughs> so next year came, they asked me to, I was like, they were like, Cook, you're going you gonna to be teaching. I'm like, you can't make me no teacher because I don't have a certification. They were like, no, Mr. Cook, listen, you did so good with the kids that you got to teach. So they made me the PE coach. Mm -hmm. From there, um, I worked there for like three years. They closed. And I went to another charter school, Rise Academy. And it was the same thing. And when I got in the building, all the kids would just gravitate to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And they would come to my room and the dean, and all the, the, the principal at that school was like the old principal at the other school, like Mr. Cook. When they come to school in the morning, they come right to your room. They just love being around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And I, I, I really don't know. But then I, I do know. I always treated the kids like the way the, the, the deans and administration at Dillard treated us. Okay. Like family. Mm -hmm. Like they belong somewhere. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. a lot of these kids come from these places. They don't have love and compassion and just nobody to listen to them. And I've always made myself available for that. Yeah, and I, I, mm -hmm. I, can, I, can, I can say yeah. Mm -hmm. But let, let me ask you this now. I, I, I know in, in dealing with, with, with young folk, especially mm -hmm. uh, young black men, mm -hmm. There are moments that you find yourself questioning, you know, um, a lot. You, what do you do when you find yourself in that, and if, if you, when you cross that, when you get to that, that point? I remind myself that I used to be them. Mm -hmm. I used to be just like them. Mm -hmm. I used to be in a space where I remember that I, think, I didn't think I had anybody listening to me. Remember, I was saying I was the only boy, right? And I didn't have any male mentors in my house to guide me or direct me in any direction. My 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 idols was the, the dope man out here on Sixth Street, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? In in the pimps. Mm -hmm. And I remember those feelings of loneliness and not having anybody to talk to, you know what I mean? And just being lost. And I think God reminds me of that every time when I meet these kids, and I see I always see a little bit of myself <clears> in them. So I, I always try to just go back to to that. You hit on a good point, Charles. You know, a, a lot of us don't want to look in that mirror, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and see where we came from, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but you, you embrace that. It's, it, you, you also, too, it, mental health is an issue. Yeah. Um, so, so aside from, I know you wear more than one hat. Yes. Uh, I, I know. Which hat fits you the best, though? I would say the mentorship part of it, the the, the trying to, to keep the connection. I've had kids, and like I said, I've been doing this almost 17 years. I have kids still call me to this day for advice. Mm -hmm. to, the, the connection is what I think would keep, would, was what keeps me grounded. Because I always said, if, if, I, if I could make myself available for, to be an ear, not a mouth, but just to, to be able to let these people express what's going on with them. It, 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 that matters a lot to mm -hmm. young people. Because I, like I said, I remind myself because it mattered to me. Yeah. And I keep myself in that space. You, and, I, you, and, 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 and you, you constantly, that seems to be the umbilical cord that ties uh, 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 a man with a young man to want to bring him up. The fact that he can see himself in that. How do you separate uh, uh, seeing the good versus the well, now you already. Asked. How do you separate that, or do you separate it, or how do you deal with that? Because oh. I know they can push you up against the oh, wall. Oh man, man. Well, patience. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to practice patience, and like I, I, I like I said, I have to reflect the back to me. Yeah. And the things that I was missing, and the things that I had to go to, and uh, and go through. How do we get other black men to realize that, Charles? Oh, how, do, how do we do that, man? Well, I think we have to let, well, teach other black men how to be men. Because mm -hmm. we're stuck in the space between, and I, I, I can I say what I You can say what you want to say, bro. Mm -hmm. We stuck between being real niggas mm -hmm. and real men. Okay. We've been taught, because I grew up over here, it's better to be a real nigga. Mm -hmm. And nobody's teaching us how to be men, and that's the space that's missing mm -hmm. with the with the black man. There's nobody teaching us how to be solid men, and we were we were raised backwards. They were raised on bravado, 
how to move out in these streets. You got to be tough. You got to be this and that. Mm -hmm. That's good. But what about your emotions? Back to you were saying, mental you know, health. the mental health. Mm -hmm. It doesn't teach you how to meet. You don't teach you nothing about your emotions. So when we get to a certain space in your life or age in your life, when you have to, when you deal, have to deal with being an adult and the things that being that teaches you how to be a man, we we ain't got the pieces. We got a puzzle, but a lot of missing pieces. Mm -hmm. So I try to reflect about things that I missed and the things that I've learned along the way to teach these young men early. I try to get them early so they'll know what to to expect. Because no one told me that this could happen if you go over there, or that can happen if you did this or that. I had to learn the hard way. So these kids, if I teach them this early, I can I can honestly feel like, hey, I, I taught them that, I told them that. Mm -hmm. And the gratification that I get is they come back to me and say, Mr. Cook, you remember you told me that? Mm -hmm. 10 years later, I had a kid come to me just, last week was a stellar week for me. I had like five kids that I taught five, 10 years ago, all come back to the school to visit me. Mm -hmm. And they were telling me all the stuff that I taught them. And y'all like, were listening? They said, yeah, Mr. Cook, you heard everything you said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's the great part of that. Like, okay, well, I, I made a difference. And they are doing well. You know what I mean? And then and, 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 and you, have, you have your failures too. You know what I mean? Okay. And with, with that, I still deal with those kids. We have, because we have kids that come from different communities, different places, that even though I taught them that, they didn't get all of it. You understand? Mm -hmm. they, didn't get, they didn't get all of it. So they made mistakes and they fell through the cracks. But I still also deal with those young men. I still deal with them. And I, I write letters to the ones that's in jail, okay. in prison. Okay. I mm -hmm. still let them know that someone cared. Remember Mr. Cook? They're like, yeah, Mr. Cook, I'm so happy that you wrote me. Uh, you know, I'm, and they, they, they apologize to me a lot. That's, that's, that let me know they respect me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I try to teach these kids, especially boys, it's not bravado, it's respect. Respect is earned. So even at the beginning of the school year with my kids, I always teach them when I introduce myself. I see in front of me, I don't see kids. I see young adults. So I'm gonna treat you like a young adult. So I'm gonna greet you like an adult. Someone that has respect. I don't see you as beneath me. I see you as my equal. Mm -hmm. So from that point on, if we deal with each other, communicate with each other, it's gonna be on an equal basis. The only way to fall down if you if, if one of us make it fall, and I'm I'm not gonna make it fall. So I'm gonna respect you from this day until the, the to the day we the day you graduate or I never see you again. But it's gonna always be a mutual respect mm -hmm. for me. And so when I meet these kids, and that's what I do every year, it just yeah, I guess it's that's that glue that sticks and they, they I have kids that you would the, the, the thugs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those are my dudes. <laughs> like those are my guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got you. And I got you. and I mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Because I want to be that I want to be that ear, because you know when when they trying to put on that image over there, but I'm trying to get that image down because I'm telling you, son, you got it, because mm -hmm. I talked to you like boom, yeah, your nephew, yeah. I I, I was telling you I, I can show you my phone. I talked to him constantly, even up to you know right till he passed away. Right. I had in my phone that I, if I see him doing something he's not supposed to do, or out of the pocket, I hit him. I'm 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 not I'm more. Uh, I'm unk at the school. Mm -hmm. I'm not Mr. Cook. I'm unk. So it's like, unk, what's going on? You know, and I, I mm -hmm. love it. But I tell them, even though you're gone and you finish with school with me, y'all my nephews forever. And I, 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 I don't just preach that. I walk that. I know. Right? I see that. Yeah. So, and I, and I think that's what the kids really appreciate with, 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 with how. Well, that's what I appreciate with them. Okay. They appreciate it back with me that, you know, that I'm still in the spirit of, uh, uh, they know that they can reach back to the, they call me the, the OG. <laughs> okay. okay. You know, Mr. Cook, we're going we gonna to have to cut this one. That's fine. But, but uh, 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 there are some opportunities that I think you and I and some other brothers need to be a part of. Yes. And, and, and doing just what you say, mm -hmm. you know, with, with these young men. Yeah. So uh, we, you, you got something coming up here soon, don't you? Yeah. We got, well, we got a graduation mm -hmm. at uh, Sunrise High School. June is the 16th. 16th. And you are going to be our speaker. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You're going to speak at our graduation. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when they asked me about it, you came to my mind. I told you that other day. You're the first person came to my mind. <laughs> because you've here, you're here. Mm -hmm. you, and you've been in our community. And our kids need to see people of our color knowing where they came from, that we can be more mm -hmm. diverse in and, 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 and anything more than what they know. Okay. So, yeah, we got that coming up. 
And I also wanted to, before you go, if I can, uh, plug my page on Facebook. Please. I created a page called Great Black Dads Worldwide on Facebook. Mm -hmm. we're, we're up to 500 members, okay. but I want to get it more than that if I can. I want to get it 1,000, 10,000 if I can. And it only promotes us fathers in a positive way. You know, because it, it's it's like um, it's like we're not we're not a lot of places that seem like they're in society that black men aren't on the job, mm -hmm. and we are. So I created that page just for us. So uh, I'm going to add ahead, you do, and do everybody it, else. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if you guys get a chance, check out the pages. Great Black Dads Worldwide on Facebook. Um, also um, Instagram, same thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we will do that. We will push that. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Cook, yeah. thank you very much. Yes. God bless you. Mm -hmm. And uh, keep touching them lives, I'm man. Working. I'm keep I'm touching keep them working lives. On. All right. Appreciate hate it. to hate. What is this new thing, or is it new? Is it because of this technology that we are able to see life in technical real time from its many facets? Yeah. I know that death has existed as long as life has. I also know that one of the first deaths recorded was that of a brother on a brother. Yet, that doesn't make it right. There seems to be no discrimination, no rhyme or reason, no fact finding, no justification, only outright annihilation of human life. Brothers and sisters, men and women, black, white, brown, yellow, red, Asian, it doesn't matter. Mass shootings, police homicides, what's the difference? Are those that kill in uniform much more expected than those that kill based upon the color of skin accepted? No, no matter how you look at it, murder is murder. It's just more painful when innocence stands in the way of bullets that come from a gun being held in the hand of a colored man shooting and murdered a colored man, woman, or child. It's like the gunman has been vilified to non-human status. So what status do we give to those who shoot into crowds of innocent people? What title do we label those who, for unknown reasons, shoot their weapons as if there were lightning bolts across the sky on a dark night during a thunderstorm, randomly killing? What status do we give those who kill in police uniforms, black robes, or street clothes? I think it's time for us to begin to put killers, no matter what they wear or what color of their skin, in the same light. Murderers. Hate on hate will only grow into more hate and will find itself killing, murdering, taking life. It doesn't matter what type of uniform, what colors of skin, the only thing that matter is hate on hate. When will it stop? Just a little bit is brought to you in part by Destination Cis Trunk, Broward County Culture Division, Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Visitors Bureau. Destination Cis Trunk is a door to explore black history and heritage in Greater Fort Lauderdale. For more information, please visit www.destinationcistrunk.com. And remember, it's all good in the hood.